Hello everyone! In this video I will be painting in Procreate, just trying to figure things out and get used to the program some. I recently was able to buy an iPad so I'm very new to this program and don't really know how things work. As always, I think the best way to get used to a new medium is to just get started with simple portrait practice. For this first painting you'll notice that it kind of starts midway through the painting. And that's because I messed with the time-lapse settings and ended up with no video at all. I did, however, remember to screen record some of the process. This was mainly to show you guys what colors I was selecting, but also because I wanted to show off the detail work, which is my favorite part. You'll see this kind of screen recording with the other paintings as well. But I kept this one in because you see it throughout the video, just kind of off to the side, and I figured it'd be kind of weird if I didn't explain why it was there. Plus, I had already tried to film about three different videos this month, and none of them really worked out because I kept messing up filming, so I wasn't going to let this one go to waste as well. I also liked how this one turned out and wanted to show it off. This one was kind of a warm-up for the other paintings and really helped me to keep positive and hopeful. I have a hard time when it comes to new mediums because of the learning curve. Things look awful for quite a bit of time before I actually get used to the medium and figure out how it works. So it's a little disheartening when nothing turns out the way you want it. But it feels really good when you do stick with it and finally get good. So that's why I like this one. Here is a better view and what it looked like when it was finished. Anyway, here is the second painting I worked on. By this point, I got my process down a little bit more. I find that I don't like to sketch things out first, but rather block in colors and shapes. And once those are all mapped out, I'll refine those shapes and colors, which in turn will help me when it comes to sketching. This sketching is done on a new layer and it's very rough. And once I'm satisfied with that, I'll lower the opacity and then start working on highlights and shadows. If you've seen any of my videos before, you know that this step takes the longest because I'm a perfectionist and cannot make up my mind. Luckily, I don't have to get it too perfect this time because I rely heavily on my detail work, which you'll see here. As always, I start with the eyes because once the eyes are finished and look good, it motivates me to finish the rest of the face. If you follow me on Instagram and have seen some of my drawings, you'd have noticed that I prefer hatching, especially when it comes to any sort of detail work. What I like about painting digitally is that I can combine my painting and drawing styles pretty well, which is something I try to do in real life but am too afraid to mess up hours of work on. In the digital world, it's a lot easier to just delete something you don't like, or to slightly alter the positioning of something without having to entirely rework an area which is pretty cool if you ask me. There are some things I need to work on when it comes to digitally painting, of course. The first of which is getting in the habit of flipping the canvas. This isn't something I can do with traditional art, so it's not something I'm used to doing, but it is something that a lot of digital artists recommend, which makes sense because when you flip it, you see a lot of the discrepancies and biases your eye has when it's looking at it a certain way. I'd suggest not flipping any of the portraits you see here today. Another thing I need to work on for my digital art is just figuring out everything that my program can do. This would have been especially helpful when it came to doing the glasses. I know Procreate has the feature of doing nice shapes, but I just do not know how to do them yet. I'm sure a simple Google search would have helped me out. I'll get to it eventually. If you guys want to let me know how to do that, it'd be much appreciated as well. Hopefully I'll have that figured out by the next time I post a video with it. For now, I just decided not to do the glasses at all, which is fine because I never intend to 100% look like the photo because that would drive me mad. This would have been especially true when it came to this photo. For some reason, I was having a very difficult time getting the positioning of her face right. You'll see me do a lot of sketch layers and reshaping of the face with paint. This was definitely the most time-consuming part of it. Eventually, I get it right, but until then, it's kind of a harsh ride with a lot of ugly faces. 
she's looking a little like a sloth right now which might be fine if that's what you're going for but it definitely was not what I wanted I think I finally pull it together when it comes to the detail work because I have an easier time of finding the shapes that are needed. Despite the difficulties that I was having, I really do enjoy the practice. It's difficult to get better at drawing or painting if you don't challenge yourself. And in the past, I've felt like I haven't been challenging myself that much. So I've been challenging myself a lot lately with portraits. Recently, I did a bunch of sketching of my Instagram followers so that I could practice more and they sent me some things that I rarely ever work on or haven't even bothered trying in years, such as full body poses, animals, and children. And it's inspired me to continue working and expanding as an artist. So maybe one day I can do that again and maybe work on it and procreate and share the video with you guys. And now looking at the painting and adjusting some areas that were bothering me, like the lips, it's starting to look pretty good. Lips are one of those things that I need to practice more of because I get really lazy when it comes to them in my paintings. I just think that lips aren't really something I focus on in general. I gravitate towards the eyes. Something I did enjoy with this painting, however, is blemishing up her face. I can't say that I've ever added acne or blemishes to any of my portraits before, so it was nice practice. I love adding moles and freckles, so it only makes sense that I would also like adding blemishes. I also had fun working on the hair, which is something I typically don't enjoy doing. It's something I've been forcing myself to put more effort into. I'm still very sketchy with how I do hair, but I really enjoy how it ends up looking. I think the next area that I really need to focus on is clothing, because I'm very simple with it. This painting that you're seeing right now went a lot faster than the previous one. His face is a lot more simple and has a very straightforward expression. There were also a lot of fun shapes in his face, which you could see in the sketch layer that I did. So the main thing that I had to work on for this one was the color values. There were certain points where it felt very desaturated and muted, so I had to pick a color and kind of up the saturation to really push those values. He has a lot of pink and reds in his shadows and highlights, so I had to mimic that. You might have noticed that I don't typically use a lot of black when it comes to my line work. I usually use a deep brown or red to really define areas. The only time I use black is for the eyelashes and the pupils, as well as the nostrils or the corners of the mouth. I just don't like harsh lines when it comes to faces or skin, and you would have to have some really dark skin for black to be the defining shadow color, which for these photos is not the case. I do, however, always use white as the highlight color. Your eyes are full of fluid and your pores are full of oil, so they reflect the light very brightly. I also like to give things more highlight because it gives my paintings somewhat of a luster. In my opinion, things always look nicer when they glisten. I feel like necks are kind of an afterthought for me as well. I'll have to remember to work on those more. As we near the end of this painting and approach the very last painting, you'll notice that I get a tad bit lazy. I don't spend as much time as I should have working on his hair. We'll just say it's very stylized. We'll say the same about his shirt too, because I couldn't be bothered with it. For this last painting, I was running out of space to draw, so I had to clear out all the layers, which is something I probably should have done when I approached the other paintings as well. Just kind of gives you a blank slate to work with. This painting very much follows the same steps that all the other ones do. I start with color blocking, then I define the shape. On top of that, I do the sketch layer, 
and that sketch layer helps me to define highlights and shadows. Once I feel I have a good blueprint of the face, that's when I go in with more details and start hatching. And within that process of hatching, I'll reposition and rework areas if necessary, as well as clean up some edges. I feel like this process dictates how I work with most mediums, but with digital mediums, I have the ability to go back and fix any steps that I may have messed up without affecting much of the work that I did in later steps, which is nice. I hope to continue working with digital mediums as much as I can. It's much more convenient in a lot of ways. There is no time waiting for things to dry. You don't have to lug around a bunch of supplies and you have a perfect digital file of what your work looks like. I'll continue to work traditionally, but I would also like to add digital into my routine of things. I still have a lot of things to learn when it comes to digital art, so maybe I can use it as a way to get more practice with lighting and more advanced art techniques, since there is very little risk involved with an undo button. While I finish up this painting, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's been supporting me. I've been appreciating all the kind words and comments as well as advice. I started making these videos as a way to keep myself being creative, and it's nice to see that other people are enjoying them as well. So thank you. Now that they're all finished, here is a closer look at what they all look like. I'll be posting individual images of each portrait onto my Instagram. You can follow me at chunter underscore art or just simply click the link in the description. Feel free to leave a comment on this video of which one was your favorite. I'll let you know which one was mine. Thank you for watching and goodbye.